Judge Sonia Cole Petalides live on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks for being with us on this Friday, a Friday of selling, a down week. We are now down four of the five trading weeks that we have just completed here today. News out of FedEx is weighing across the board. It's weighing on other stocks in the packaging um, area. Packaging Corporation of America International Paper both down over 11 percent after FedEx said shipping volumes had decreased. Jeffries downgrading both these stocks to underperform this morning. Some big moves, right? You see 12 percent, 10 percent, 20 percent. GE down almost 5 percent today after the CFO warned that persisting supply chain issues are weighing on profits. The company is seeing delays in receiving parts from suppliers that's leading to delays in GE's profitable jet engine division. Michael Keeley will have more on that story for us later. Adobe is lower again following the earnings and its $20 billion acquisition of Figma. Barclays downgrading the stock to equal weight from overweight, slashing the price target to 340. That's down from 440. B of A downgrading it to neutral from buy and cut its price target to 350, down from 450. That stock is down over 25% this week. And Uber is down 4% after a teenage hacker reportedly accessed the rideshare company's IT services. The New York Times saying that the hacker accessed Uber's international Slack communications and caused the shutdown of its internal communications and engineering systems. Uber said it's investigating that hack. And take a look at Bitcoin right now. 19,390. That's down 1.7%. Let's switch back to our top story. We're watching FedEx pulling its guidance. The CEO warned of a worldwide recession, meaning deals with worldwide shipping. Melissa Armo, founder, owner, the stock swoosh, is with us. And people love FedEx. So many people come on and recommend FedEx because they think it's uh, definitely kind of a go-to. It's a recession proof. No matter what, people are using FedEx, but this was a big drop today. Your thoughts? Well, huge drop for FedEx, and it's very interesting because, again, for something like this to come out today, they just had earnings. They just had earnings. This is almost a pre-earnings of the next earnings, which is, you know, weeks and weeks and two months away. They just had earnings. So, it's almost like they're, they're, I mean, this is such a negative sentiment to come out to say something like this when the next earnings are so many weeks away. I and mean, so many people have been discussing the recession. It's whether your opinion or not, whether you think we're in one or we could be in one or we're going into one, we're at the end of one. Everyone has a different opinion. But I think one thing that everybody can agree on is the fact that everything has gone up in price. Yes, gas prices have dropped from June to August the end of August, beginning of September, but gas prices have gone up over the last 12 months, the last two years. Food is continuing to rise. We had some bad numbers on that in the last week as well. And consumer sentiment this morning, as you were talking about earlier, again, that number is down. So when you look at consumer sentiment where we were at a year ago, it was high. People were optimistic. Things were getting better. We were pulling out of COVID. Now people are very scared about what the future holds. And, you know, FedEx is an international company, so they would know. They would know. And, again, fuel costs are, are, are on top of them then with all the shipping. And, again, if people are spending less money, they're going to order less things through the mail. They're going to have less deliveries, too. So they would know what's happening, really, and have their hand on the pulse. The fact that the market reacted so negatively along with FDX today, that was really telling for me, really telling for me. And so what's interesting here is how it took down the whole market, right? I mean, the market is already looking for reason to sell. I don't think, I think down was the path of least resistance based on everyone I speak to. Um, but but FedEx at, at a low of 155 today, right now 159. This is obviously an annual low. This is a 52-week low. Is that a huge buying opportunity? Would you pick some up here or no way? No way. Absolutely not. When you look at the stock price, what did you say? <laughs> I said it's down over 20% today. No, no. I mean, again, if the market's lower, then everything usually goes with the market. It's the same reason why people are buying the market. They were buying the market two weeks ago. Why? If everybody thought the market was lower, which some people, you know, some people disagree, they're buying every dip. It's not like you're going to lose everybody. Down money, you're down money, you're down money, you're going to get margin calls if you're holding these trades overnight. You know, I mean, come on, people. It's like, think about what's happening right now. The time right now of the play is short. you got to find the right things too short. That's true.
But I mean, there's very few, few things that I'd want to go long right now, very few. Right, understood. So at this point now, when you look at UPS, would you also steer clear of that for the same well, reason? UPS looks like a good short. FDX looks lower as well. It didn't hit 150 today. That's probably in sight. It had such a big move, such a big move overnight and this morning in the free market that I think the stock's just exhausted today. But again, if we get up Monday morning, the market's down again, again, another negative day into next week to start next week when we're going into the Fed rate hike, which everybody knows is going to happen next week. If we have another bearish week in the market, I mean, look out below. All these levels are going to break through. We're going to get to 280 in the Qs, 380 in the SPY. We're going to get to through 150 in the FDX. You could short UPS. Boeing is another nice one to the downside. I mean, there's so many good shorts right now. You, you, you know, I mean, it, it, it's just incredible. This week was such a great week if you were on the short side of things. And, of course, I called lots of shorts this week. You know, I mean, the, the, you're missing opportunity if you're not taking a look at what's going on. I know retail traders love to go long. I know everybody likes to do that. But the fact is, why would you short? Why would you go long a falling knife? You have no idea where it's going to land, and you could get hurt on the way down. Definitely, definitely, definitely. And you saw that yeah, with the buying yeah. we saw last week. Understood, understood. So at this point now, you've been shorting the market. Where this is a market that has been down uh, every single week except one in five weeks. Yep. Had days that we really sold off in a big way, like that 1,200-point-plus loss on the Dow. Um, what are so? What are your moves? I mean, what are you shorting? Are you shorting the S&P 500? Are you waiting to buy some stocks at a lower level? If so, what are you watching for? When to buy? When to buy would be when things start to settle down. Right now, everyone is excited, and your previous guest was discussing the rate hike, saying that it could be a percent instead of three quarters of a percent. Everybody's on edge about that going into next week. Things have to settle down. Too many people are saying too many different things. One minute we're going to get inflation down to 2%. The next minute we got to, you know, raise rates as quick as we can, and it could take a year. So the Fed can't even make up its mind what they want to do. So how are people, you know, investing going to know what to do? I say if you're invested for the long haul, you want to buy stocks that are strong, but I would wait until our earnings season begins. That's in about three to four weeks. Wait until stocks report, and maybe they'll have some good reports. Apple is something to watch. Tesla is always something to watch. Netflix, too. But I would wait until that opportunity. I don't think the market's going to have a rally until the end of the year, which is always the Christmas rally. But, I mean, we could be sideways or drop before our new rally continues. I said it when we were on earlier this year. There's no chance for the market to make a brand-new all-time high at all this year. It is not going to happen. This will be the first year that hasn't happened, and I can't even tell you when. The market has been so bullish up until, up until this year. And so people are really, really need to think about what they're investing their money on, think about what they're trading. And again, Ameritrade, short trades, quick trades, in and out fast. Nobody said that you have to take a trade and hold it forever. And that could be long. So you could go long something quickly and get out. You could do a short and get out quick. Right now, the market's so volatile, I don't think people should be in anything for any long period of time. Yeah. Wait until you get earnings. Wait until the companies report it. You want to go long something. Yeah, and you talked about the possible year-end rally, too. Melissa Armo, thank you. The stock swoosh, appreciate it, right? A market under pressure, no doubt. Thank you. Coming up next, the holiday shopping season is upon us. Getting closer. So.